Hello. Hi guys. Just want to wait a minute. Have some people join. Got a lot to talk about, a couple things that I wanted to say and some things that I know uh, you guys have asked me and had some questions about and I wanted to be able to give you some more information about what I've learned and uh, and what you should be you should be doing right now. So hi everybody. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. I know it's Saturday night. Everybody's got big, big dates to go on and big fancy things to do, but uh, Amazon's always important and uh, this is uh, a big business, so you have to always stay on point. Feel free to start asking questions. If there's something that's on your mind and something I haven't answered before, I'd be happy to talk about it. And we'll get started in about a minute. Hello. Hi, everyone. Glad to see you guys are here. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you guys have a lot of questions. Feel free to start asking some now. Um, we're going to get into questions. Hi, Jersey. New York here. We're going to get in some questions, into some questions in a few minutes. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple things that I've learned and a couple things that um, people have asked me over the last few weeks, uh, since, well, last two weeks since I've done a, a live last. Um, people want to know about um, shipping costs. And here's my perspective on it. And granted, everything I tell you now is only from my point of view. It's not from um, a, a serious professional's point of view. This is just me um, giving you an honest answer and honest thoughts on Amazon and how I've gotten to the point where I've gotten to. Um, so as far as shipping costs go, um, people will buy from you if, you're, if your price is higher than other people if they feel that your shipping costs are lower than others. So for example, Amazon and especially eBay, if they see free shipping, they're more inclined to buy from you than they are from someone who charges 50 cents or a dollar or two dollars or even five dollars less if they have to pay for shipping costs. And there's reasoning behind that. Um, the reasoning behind that is they're assuming that if they're charging shipping, their, their shipping is slow. And that's something that you really want to consider when you are listing on Amazon and you're listing on eBay is to try to remove shipping costs. Um, granted, I understand that people do pay shipping costs. I include my shipping costs in my markup. So if you feel that, uh, you know, your shipping costs are going to be $2 or $3 or $4 now that the, the USPS charges have gone up, um, you should consider maybe marking up a dollar or two to... Um, to give back towards your shipping costs and remove all shipping costs. So that's just something for you guys to consider. Obviously, again, it's, it's entirely your business, your account. You can do whatever you like. Um, so consider that next time you see someone on your listing. Also, another point for that, uh, a good point for that, is that you automatically win the buy box. The buy box will become yours more times than it will if you don't have shipping. Uh, if you do have shipping, sorry. So that's that. You can consider that. Thank you. And let me just check and see. I saw there's some questions coming through. Um, listings without a rank. Why? It's because nobody's purchased it yet. Everything that gets ranked, if it gets purchased, if there's no rank, there's no purchase. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. I really appreciate it. Looks good. Um, the next thing, someone asked me about recirculating profit. Now... If you have profit after a small amount of time that you're doing Amazon, it is in your best interest to put it back into Amazon. Uh, Amazon is um, a very large money-making machine, and if you can invest a little bit of money and you can continuously, continuously throw in uh, a little bit more, it will continue to grow. However, um, when you stop feeding the beast, and that's what, that's just the, the Amazon mantra, 
uh, feed the beast, if you, can, if you stop feeding the beast, it will stop generating sales for you. So if you have extra funds that you can contribute or if you feel like um, there's some uh, profit coming back to you as opposed to paying a bill or buying you know, yourself something nice, my suggestion is, is to reinvest it back into Amazon. Do I expect you to invest everything? No, of course not. Um, but you should always consider that as something, um, you know, just like any business. You want to keep reinvesting into your business to make sure that your business thrives. So I, I think that that's a good idea. And I think that anybody that wants to grow their business and wants to potentially get out of a job um, or um, just give themselves a a bit of a boost, especially with Amazon, that that would probably be the best idea just to consider contributing re back into it as opposed to taking a salary or paying stuff with it. Guys, thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Hi, how are you? <laughs> um, another question. Feel free, guys, to ask any questions you have. I'm here. Uh, my older videos are on YouTube. I have one other video. I've done a couple lives before. Um, I've also done a live with Flip a Dollar. And, um, and I'm always around. I want you guys to understand that, that I'm a completely genuine person and I shoot from the hip and I want you guys to feel comfortable enough to slide me a DM or talk to me about whatever you've got going on and I will give you my honest opinion, honestly. Um, I'm not trying to, uh, take anything from you guys. I just want to help because honestly, if your business grows, my business grows, we'll all be doing the right thing when it comes to Amazon and everybody will see the difference. So the uh, question is, do I create my own listings? We talked about this a little bit in my first video. Uh, yes, I do create some of my own listings. A lot of things I just scan and um, just scan and put up. <laughs> um, is it fun to create listings? Not, not always, not always fun, but there's always the opportunity for you to make a bundle or for you to have more, um, uh, to have better pricing than if you just find something to scan and put it up on your own. Um, a lot of people ask me, how do they find stuff? How do I find stuff? I do strictly retail arbitrage. There are a lot of people that do, um, a lot of different things than what I do. And, um, I think that if you just take your time and you relax and you go into a store, let's say it's just Target or Walmart or Kmart or Sears or whatever, and you just scan. You literally just hang out and scan and see what you can find. Um, nine times out of ten, you'll find stuff. And it may not be everything you thought it would be, but it'll be there. And if you start to put the pressure on yourself to do better, do more, um, find more things, find better things, find better price things, um, you know, you're not going to find stuff. And I get that a lot. A lot of people, when you contact me, when they contact me, they say, oh, you know, I can't find anything. I'm in XYZ stores and I went shopping for five hours today. You just don't find anything. And it's, it's strictly because there's just too much pressure. You just need to take it down a few notches and just have a day of just scanning. Anticipate not finding anything. And that's the way you can start to develop your mind into finding new product and finding, um, finding some good items with substance that you can replenish. That's the key word there, replenish. Um, and that'll make you money. And, you know, if it flips 5 or 10 or 15 times and you're getting a 5 or a $10 profit on it, I mean, congratulations. That's, that's really all you need. So... Give yourself a break and uh, just keep trying. So let me just scroll back a little bit. There's a whole bunch of questions here that I missed. Uh, someone says, uh, I'm in the red from feeding the beast. I'm wondering how long do I have to wait for any profit? Um, profit comes when you are just keep, you just have to keep hitting at it. Honestly, it's not going to just flow profit. Um, my whole perspective on this is to continuously reinvest my money into Amazon. Um, do I take money out? Yes, sometimes I do. Uh, I don't go on big lavish trips. I don't have big fancy things. Uh, I want my business to grow. I want my business to be um, expanding constantly so that when I 
uh, do want to do things like that and I am a little bit older, then I can feel like I've actually accomplished the right things and I've done the right things to uh, make my business successful and most importantly, make it move on its own. I don't want to sit somewhere in, a, in an office building for the rest of my life, whether it's my business or anybody else's, and do work. I would like to have it grow to the point where it's self-sustaining, where there's uh, a staff of people working so that I don't have to work. That's the idea. That's really the idea. So um, there's no real set time limit on when a profit will start to begin. Uh, as long as you're watching your margins, you're paying attention to your Amazon seller app, um, you're paying attention to things like rank. Um, some people like to use like Camel, Camel, Camel and Keepa and stuff like that. And I don't, I don't particularly feel like I need to. I haven't really had much issues with um, merchandise that doesn't move, honestly. So if you just stay on top of what you're doing and give yourself a chance, a fighting chance, the profit just starts, just starts to come in on its own. Hope that answered your question. Someone asked, um, oh, they just started following me. Thank you. Um, will I give an overview of what I do? Sure, I do retail arbitrage. I only do retail arbitrage. I don't do online arbitrage. I don't do private, uh, private label. I don't do wholesale. I really don't know much about any of that, honestly. I don't really want to know about it right now. Um, I, I enjoy shopping. Uh, I enjoy the thrill of the chase, quite honestly. And I don't feel like I get that from on online arbitrage or wholesale or private label. Uh, I would like eventually to be able to move into different markets. Um, I like to teach people how to shop, uh, shop effectively. Um, and I'm not talking about couponing or anything like that. I don't do anything like that really. Um, but I want people to understand that you can walk into any store uh, and you can make money. And it's very easy. And you don't have to have a college degree. And you don't have to have a high school degree. And you don't have to be beautiful, you don't have to be smart, you don't have to be skinny or fat, you can be anything you want. You can just literally walk into a store and buy and make money and walk out and know that there's going to be XYZ amount of money in your pocket by the end of the day. Um, and so that's what I do. I give people um, the ideas on what to look for and where to shop and what to do and how to do it and how to start to train your eye. Um, so there's a YouTube video up from a few weeks ago that I did that explains it a little bit more, but I'm glad you joined, so thanks. Let's see what else you got. Someone says, I'm new to your channel, can you talk about some of the top things that you've done that really helped scale your retail arbitrage? Okay. Um, I actually, I think I might have spoken about this in the last video also, when I first started doing retail arbitrage, I would walk into a Target and I would walk out spending six, seven, eight hundred dollars. And this is literally just finding stuff that I can see on a shelf. Now, this is not using my spidey senses or anything like that. Um, I simply walked in, took out my phone, used my Amazon seller app, which is free, as you all know, and scanned. And I found a product on the second aisle that I was in in Target that literally boosted me uh, almost $700 a day in Merchant Fulfilled because I couldn't, I, I didn't have the time to send it into Amazon. It was too busy. Um, so did I do anything special? No, I'm, I'm not special. I, I won't pretend that I am. Uh, I do think that if you just take the time and again, don't put pressure on yourself. You go out and you find some things and you find some places to go and perhaps you'll find stuff, perhaps you won't, but you go out and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again and you do it and, you do it, and, it, and you just find stuff. Um, so that really helps scale me. Um, the fact that I'm doing this a while now is also a benefit because I've learned a lot in four years. Um, a lot of people are new and they come on and they say, you know, listen, I want to quit my job or, um, you know, I hate my boss or I hate this or I need money for my bills. And, and that's great motivation. Don't get me wrong, because the same thing happened to me. I was in the same situation. I wanted to get out. I wanted to make a better life for myself, and I wanted to relax. Um, but you can't scare yourself into making money. It doesn't work like that. The, the more you scare yourself, the less likely you will. So give yourself a fighting chance and go out and just scan and just relax. And then eventually you'll start to see things start to change. I uh, hope that answers some questions. Uh, 
Someone says they finally got ungated in grocery and beauty. That's great. Congratulations. Uh, we spoke a few weeks ago and it actually happened two days ago and got uh, approved. It was automatically approved. That's great. Amazon has been doing some auto approving um, over the last uh, maybe a few months or so uh, for people that have accounts that are kind of um, older. Not necessarily old, but you know, as you keep progressing and you keep showing that you know you're a legitimate business, uh, all of your merchandise is is legitimate and um, there's no issues with IP claims or anything. Um, so it'll get automatically approved. You can try, actually, if you guys wanted to try, you can go to inventory, then add a product. You can type in whatever type of product you're looking to sell, like, for example, if it's Nike uh, or Adidas or Apple. Uh, and then it'll come up with a list, and it'll say request approval. Um, and you can try some. Um, there's lists online, and there's plenty of things that you can uh, get ungated in. That probably you didn't even know you were gated in and probably you didn't even know that you could sell or uh, wanted to sell but now maybe you will so uh, yes Amazon does automatic approvals which is fantastic and I'm really happy for you congratulations let's see Uh, will I be putting together a course soon? Uh, you got ungated in grocery. That's great. Congratulations. I'm not going to be putting a course together. I don't. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't believe in charging for things that you can very easily find online. Um, like I said, I'm always around to ask questions, and I feel like you guys are smart enough to figure it out. You don't need to pay someone thousands of dollars to uh, to teach you how to shop. <laughs> Uh, I do do private shopping trips. Um, I don't charge a lot of money. I just, if you, if I do take you out, it's just simply to teach you the basics. Um, you don't need uh, a mentor. You don't need a million dollars. You just need to want it, and uh, you have to give yourself a chance. So that's that. No course for me. Uh, someone says, sorry, I'm new in this business. I believe that you receive this often. I'm sorry to ask. I'm trying to learn and get into the game. What do you recommend to learn to understand better the whole process? Honestly, there's a million YouTube videos. I don't recommend anybody specifically because I, um, I don't know their uh, motivation on why they do videos. I know my motivation is just to give some information because I really feel good after this, honestly. Um, like I said earlier, if you guys succeed, I succeed because things are run correctly on Amazon. There's no issues. There's no price competitions. You will learn what I've learned. Um, and I've learned from mentors, and I've paid thousands of dollars. And um, I don't regret it, but it was also a different time back then. There weren't as many people um, looking to just take money and claim themselves as a mentor and, and not do anything for you. Um, right now I know that there's a lot of people with a lot of courses and a lot of money being spent and um, you know if you feel like it's something that's good for you then uh, you know I wish you all the best but I'm not I don't promote anyone and I don't suggest anybody spend a lot of money uh, figuring this out if you have the time to learn from a course you have the time to learn on YouTube honestly um, also Amazon has um, I don't know what it's called. They have some sort of seller, uh, seller, seller classes or something like that. I forgot what it's called. Seller University, I think it's called. Um, and you can pretty much find out a lot of stuff about uh, Amazon, and pretty much all of the questions you have can be answered through there. And there's nowhere better to learn than directly from the horse's mouth. Um, I wouldn't take too many people's uh, advice unless it's something you believe is correct. I wouldn't just go by whatever you see on uh, online. Let's see. Do I experience a lot of returns in groceries or beauty? That's a really good question. Um, just today I got $120 worth of returns back to me in uh, a beauty product that I sell. And I sell a lot of it. And I was talking to someone earlier and we were discussing um, the risks and the rewards of using and, and selling beauty product and um, and groceries and to be honest with you the return on this one specific beauty product that I sell is about forty dollars profit um, it's not expensive to buy it's not expensive pretty much anywhere I could buy it almost in every store 
Um, I can ship it direct merchant fulfilled or I can send it into Amazon, but a $40 profit, mind you, um, the risk is high, but the reward is high. And you have to decide how, again, how you want to run your business. If you feel like you can invest in a $20 product that's going to sell a hundred times, um, and you'll probably get a one or a 2% return rate, um, then by all means, you're welcome to my world. Um, if you feel like you can only invest in a dollar or a two dollar or five dollar profit, the return rate is very small. Um, plus, not to mention you only spent a dollar or five dollars or three dollars. It's not uh, it's not breaking the piggy bank, basically. So if you think that um, you know you found some interesting stuff and you want to try to sell it, I would do one or two, wait, and then see how it works out for you. If you feel like you get a lot of returns. Groceries, on the other hand, are a little bit different. Um, expiration dates. You're battling two different things at the same time. You're, you're battling um, people eating your, your food and sending it back, which is absolutely disgusting. And that happens all the time. Um, and then the other battle is the people that, um, you know, say it's close to expiration date or Amazon says that it's close to expiration date. So those, those are things that you have to mind. Uh, Amazon just started a new policy now that all health and beauty products need to have, if they have an expiration date, they have to be submitted into them as well. So anything with an expiration date is dangerous. If you feel like you can't flip it fast, then I wouldn't flip it. Um, when I buy groceries, I like to look for things that say new or limited edition. Uh, I like to do seasonal products, like for example, Halloween. There's, you know, Halloweeny cookies that have a little black and, and uh, orange sparkles, you know, sprinkles on them and stuff. And um, Christmas is always uh, peppermint bark and um, all these great Christmassy flavors, pumpkin spice. Um, those always sell well. Those will never not sell well. Um, but in terms of just general grocery merchandise, I don't really do it. I, I really just don't feel like it's, um, it's a big bang for my buck, honestly, number one. Because think about it. Are you going to spend $15 on a box of cereal for your family? I mean, I don't, I won't, and I wouldn't. Um, is it because I know more? Maybe, but, um, I just don't see it happening and I've never been successful with that. Um, now on the other hand, think about, um, a great pumpkin spice and, you know, a new box of pumpkin spice cookies. Now it's October, it's fall, people are loving pumpkin spice. Would I spend $15 on a box of cookies? Now you've got a different story. So always keep that in mind and, um, returns, I would say, they, they come with the territory, unfortunately. There's nothing you can really do about it. But if you um, just mind your P's and Q's, you watch your expiration dates. Um, Amazon also started to offer something called a safety claim, which I'm not 100% clear on yet. Um, but I know that if someone sends you back something not in the same condition that they sent it in, uh, you can file a claim against them before they put in a claim against you. So before they put in an A to Z claim. Um, if you file a, a safety claim, it actually cuts them off at the pass so that if you do get an A to Z claim, you've already filed something to protect yourself. I try not to do it too often, um, but I do have some higher priced items that um, they get abused <laughs> and they come back to me used and abused, literally used and abused. Um, so I protect myself with safety claims and so far I've, I've had to do three claims and I've won three claims. You don't have to, you don't have to give them back any money, you don't have to refund them anything. And you also don't pay for the shipping that, they, that they, they, they charge you to send it back. So that's something to, to think about. Guys, thanks so much for, call, for coming. I appreciate it. Baby Got Chess says, I hate my little bosses. I hate my bosses too. Uh, someone says they were proof for Nature Valley the other day. That's great. I mean, literally, if you can just do some applications, Google, Google um, how to add product or how to find... Um, blocked listings on Amazon, blocked uh, brands on Amazon, you'll get thousands and thousands and thousands of names. And this is actually what I teach people to do that I train. Um, you know, you put a couple in and you'll see if you can get auto approved. It's not a big secret. Anybody that, that tells you that this is a secret or anything that they teach is a secret, it's not. There's nothing that uh, I'm telling you that you can't find online right now. And clearly, you need to be successful. You're here right now with me on a Saturday night and we're talking and it's 930 and I'm sure there's a million other things you or I could be doing, but instead you want to actually make a move on your business. You want to take care of yourself and you want to show that you're motivated and that's fantastic. So, um, 
you know, just keep that in mind. Always keep trying. If you come across any pitfalls when you're scanning, you always take a picture of it. I take like a screenshot of my uh, camera and I take it home and I actually investigate it and I see what's going on and I try to add the product at home and I give myself, um, you know, some background on it and see if they only sell religiously online, if they only sell on Amazon. Um, if they never sold on Amazon, it's a good opportunity to contact them and say, hey, you don't sell on Amazon. Let me let me help you. Um, so that's that. Uh, so congratulations on Nature Valley. That's great. Um, do store employees ever question me as to why I'm scanning? If so, how do I handle it? It's actually pretty funny. I, I actually went scanning once, um, and they said to me, you know, why are you scanning? And I, and I said, I'm not scanning. I'm just price checking. And it just ended the whole conversation. There was no conversation to be had after that. Um, so I, I wouldn't really be concerned about other people uh, asking questions or... Um, or saying anything about scanning. It's really not that big of a deal, honestly. Um, I know you're not allowed to take pictures of stuff, which is kind of weird, but in any case, it doesn't really matter. But if they say, why are you scanning? I'm not scanning anything. People actually ask me when I check out, and some of you that are here have been shopping with me before, they say, you know, oh, are you selling this stuff? And personally, I don't care. I tell them I'll sell it, or I do this, or I work for a school, or I work for a church. They don't really care. They just want they just want to be nosy. That's really all it is. They're not telling their manager not to sell you any stuff, honestly. And if they are, they're ridiculous. So, thanks, Vic. Um, let's see. Uh, someone says, I checked and I found out I can sell Adidas. I didn't have to get approved. I was just allowed. That's great, honestly, because you'll find that there's millions of categories and millions of brands that you don't know about that now you can sell. Um, and like I said, it's very simple. You go to inventory, um, add a product, type in a product name, a product brand name, uh, and see what comes up. And honestly, you'll be really surprised because I am ungated now in over 400 categories and brands. Um, and I've only paid for two. I've paid for, um, health, I paid for health and beauty back four years ago and I paid for topicals last year and that was it. I've never paid for anything after that. I've been ungated and everything else. So you'll see it'll all start to open up. I promise you. Uh, do I do much bundling? I do. I actually just started a course today learning about bundling. Um, not so much bundling like toys and gifts and like baskets, Easter baskets and stuff like that, but more so um, bundling uh, actual items. So maybe next time I come on, we'll have a conversation about that. But Bundling is great. Bundling is how you'll really make your money, honestly. Um, imagine if you took two bottles of vitamins versus one bottle of vitamins. Your one bottle of vitamin will have a $2 profit or a $3 profit, which is not terrible, but it's not, it's not worthwhile. It's not worthwhile for me anyway. Um, but now if you bundle two together, now you can have a $9 profit or a $10 profit or even a $12 profit just because you put two bottles together. It's really very simple. Um, so if anybody has any questions, you can always DM me. We can talk privately about it. But yeah, I would definitely consider bundling um, as opposed to just putting up uh, one-off items unless you find amazing one-off items. Hi, Monica. <laughs> How long did it take me to scale up? Um, I did Amazon for three years before I started really grinding honestly um for the first year i actually did it with my best friend who was my business partner at the time and she and i would just randomly go to like five below or you know some junk stores around manhattan or whatever and we'd find some stuff and we would sell it we would flip it and it would sell relatively quickly and it was fun and we made a couple hundred dollars and blah 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 that's that that's that story um eventually she didn't want to do it anymore she felt like it was too time consuming for her so i continued and i've always had the entrepreneurial spirit um, I've had businesses before this that were very successful and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to quit my job. That's basically what it boiled down to. I wanted to leave my job. Um, I didn't want to be, um, anybody else's moneymaker. I wanted to be my own moneymaker. Um, and it took me, uh, I would say probably a year, like a full year to get it to the point where I was smiling at the end of the day and smiling at the end of the year. Um, you know, as you guys can see on my Instagram, my numbers don't lie and I'm not forging anything. It's just, it is what it is. I do about $1,000 a day. I'm not ashamed to admit it. 
Um, can I be doing more? Yes. Am I going to be doing more? Yes. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. And $1,000 a day is a lot of money. And, uh, you know, you just have to give yourself an opportunity to do it. Really, that's all it is. If you want to scale, you can scale. Give yourself the fighting chance. Invest your money the right way. Um, make sure you're watching your, um, your, your rank. Make sure you're watching your price points. Make sure you're watching your profit margins. And you should be good to go soon. Let's see. How do I feel about other um, retail arbitrage sources? Ah, oh, it's my buddy. Um, I actually love retail arbitrage. That's what I do. So I will go to Target. I will go to TJ Maxx. I will go to Marshalls. Uh, I will go to JCPenney. I will go to Macy's. Um, basically, anywhere that sells stuff, I'll go to. It doesn't necessarily have to be stuff on sale. It can be stuff that you find that nobody want, nobody's listed on Amazon before. Nobody um, has had an opportunity to even bundle. Um, so there's always an opportunity for you to increase um, your business by just doing something simple like shopping. Um, I've learned that I can walk pretty much into any store, any store, and find something. Um, and it's probably not just one thing. It's probably several things. So, again, just give yourself an opportunity when you walk into a store, take some time, use your app, and you'll find stuff very easily. Um, thanks for your question. Uh, what do you sell the most in retail arbitrage? What are my favorite categories to sell in? On my last video, I talked a little bit about um, health, beauty, and grocery. That's actually my, my niche market. Uh, I find that those are the most profitable. I also find that they have the most return. Um, really very simple makeup and uh, health and beauty products and, um, you know, just basic groceries, basic stuff. Um, I don't do anything fancy. I'm not looking for, um, for like these unicorns in, in, you know, stop and save or <laughs> wherever I'm grocery shopping. I really just find stuff that, um, that reaches out to me. I look for things with nice packaging. I look for things that have, um, something interesting involving them. Um, and that's, my favorite. Those are my favorite. Let's see what else. Hey, Flip. <laughs> That's great. How much money did I use to start up? I invested $500, and that was four years ago. Um, I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I didn't know if it was going to work, and I um, just gave myself a fighting chance. I walked around some places and I started to scan and I was lost in the sauce, honestly. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea where I was going and I had no idea, um, that it was going to be this great. Honestly, I didn't know that it was going to give me an opportunity like this to work from home, to have employees, to have freedom. Um, I, I really had no idea quite honestly. Um, so just a couple hundred dollars. You don't need to start with that much. You can start with a lot less if you want. Just give yourself an opportunity. Uh, let's see what else. Thank you guys. I appreciate all the love. Um, I love to shop. I got to learn more about retail arbitrage. Retail arbitrage is really simple. You just go into a store uh, and you scan some stuff and you see the gross profit margin if it's worth it for you to purchase it or not. Um, like I said, there's tons of videos online you can watch or feel free to ask me any questions. Um, it's about simple math in your head and uh, it takes about 30 seconds to figure out if something is good or not, and you check the rank and make sure that it's ranked well. I don't like to take anything that's ranked under um, 100K. Uh, I'm sorry, over 100K. I just don't feel like it moves fast enough, but um, yeah, there's, there's actually some spreadsheets online if you guys wanted a spreadsheet of, uh, of what to purchase at what rank. Um, I'd be happy to send it to you, you know, and you can just slide me a DM and I'll get it over to you right away. Have I considered using a prep service or hiring help for shipping? I actually have great help for shipping. Um, I have some family members and I have um, some great friends and I have some great employees and I am very, very lucky that I've been able to, um, to involve everybody in this business. This business has been um, a, a godsend, honestly. It's really been uh, so, so, so substantially fulfilling and I don't know how else to express it to you guys, but um, yeah, I have some help. Um, would I be able to do it on my own? 
I mean, I could. It, it would be exhausting, honestly. It wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to do what I do. I wouldn't be able to to shop the way I shop or go out and uh, find more business, drum up business, go online, print out my merchant fulfilled. It would just be exhausting. It would be beyond exhausting. It, it would almost be impossible. Uh, as far as prep service, I don't want to do prep service. I don't, I, I like to do my own stuff. I like to be hands on with my own stuff, know what's going on. I like my employees to be involved. I like my, um, everybody that does work for me knows what's going on, where it's going. Um, we have a system. Uh, and, and it, we get it out. We get it in, we get it out. I don't want to send it to somebody, pay them. It cuts into my profit margins. Um, and then it just, it, you know, it's not always perfect. So I don't really want to use, I don't think I want to use a prep service. Maybe if I ever did a private label, I'd consider a prep service. Um, I actually did a private label many years ago, which I didn't care for. Uh, and I probably won't do one again anytime too soon. So let's see. What's it like to have employees in this business? What's their structure as far as hours, etc.? Um, honestly, it's not um, it, it's not some serious uh, set kind of hours or anything like that. It's you know I work from home. It's a home based business, and I try to keep um, a relatively light workload day uh, so that people can enjoy their lives a little bit and not have to worry about. Uh, doing Amazon all day every day it's kind of uh, it's, it can get kind of frustrating after a while um, but if you can manage an employee and you can get an employee then uh, you'll see your business grow substantially so uh, you should consider one for yourself too uh, how much do I invest monthly now I mean there's no specific um, amount honestly there it fluctuates I can't really give you an exact amount if I make a thousand dollars a week, I invest most of it back in. Um, but I've also built it to the point where I can feel like I've grown it to uh, actually work for me, as opposed to me working for it. So that's something for you to consider. Um, don't worry about how much anybody else invests. Only worry about what you can invest, and give yourself um, give yourself some extra motivation to work a little bit harder or to get a side hustle or something, so you can reinvest it into your business and grow your business a little bit faster. Um, have I explored listing items on international markets? I have. Uh, I actually do Mexico and Canada now, and I am considering, I actually signed up for, um, Amazon Australia, and after this, I am considering, um, the Pan UK. Uh, a lot of people that I know have been pretty successful with it. A lot of people that I know that do wholesale on, on Instagram that I'm sure most of you guys know, um, do successful, uh, business with Amazon UK. So that's something to consider as well going forward. But uh, does Easter candy sell well? Easter candy is actually one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, okay, we're good on time. So holiday sales and bundles are a really big business, and people want to have um, things that they can't normally get where they are now. So there are transplants from New York that moved to Florida, that moved to Texas and California and wherever. Uh, and they die for things. They're like, oh, gosh, I wish I had this. This is my favorite, um, you know, Easter candy or this is my favorite <coughs> cookies or whatever it is. Those are all things to consider when you're, when you're buying stuff. Um, so, for example, March 17th is St. Patrick's Day coming up. Uh, you can consider buying some St. Patrick's Day decorations. I, a few years ago, I bought some hats and some uh, little blowy things like you use for uh, the New Year. Some beads, like New Orleans-style beads. Um, shot glasses and make a little set of them and you can sell that as a set um, I know that five below had a set a couple years ago for five dollars literally for five dollars and it was selling for almost thirty nine dollars and that's just for St. Patrick's Day and St. Patrick's Day is not like a huge holiday um, also there's Easter coming up um, Easter candy is amazing you definitely want to work on peeps peeps actually has their own website they sometimes do 25 percent off um, right before Christmas, they do about 50% off. Um, so that's something to consider also. Um, there's also Passover, which I don't know, know if a lot of you guys know about what that is, but I spoke to someone in Australia the other night who didn't exactly know what Passover was. Um, but it's, it's a Jewish holiday, um, and it seems like there doesn't seem to be a large market for kosher items on Amazon. And that led me into a whole bunch of other things, like there's not a lot of Pakistani items or Indian items um, or, or products that are culturally um, wanted 
on Amazon, especially Amazon United States. Um, so that's something to think about. Anything that could potentially be kosher for Passover, um, that's actually a pretty big business. I've actually done that before, too. There's some grocery stores um, that's, that are specifically kosher around here that I go to and I shop at. Um, and you'd just be so surprised. You'll scan it. There'll be no sellers. It'll be like my heart's content. <laughs> Um, so you've got Passover, Easter, St. Patrick's Day, and you've got Mother's and Father's Day. Um, TJ Maxx has some great stuff for Mother's Day. I mean, Father's Day is a little bit more difficult because dads are hard to shop for, but um, for Mother's Day, there's always little trinket sets, um, mugs and things. You can start to make a bundle. You can put some things inside a mug, and, you know, that can be your, your niche. So always keep that in mind. Always think about what's coming up next um, and, and keep your options open. So as far as Easter candy goes, go, go to town on Easter candy. Easter candy is like second to Halloween candy, honestly. And people die for Easter candy. People die for Easter candy all year long. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Do I sell mostly seasonal groceries because of expiration, date, expiration dates I was talking about earlier? No. Um, no, I, don't, I just don't buy generic groceries. Like I don't buy cans of soup. Um, I don't buy cereal obviously no bread, um, crackers, not really, unless they're seasonal, um, potato chips, unless they're interesting and unique kinds. Like there's just so many different things. I'm not really worried about expiration dates, quite honestly. Expiration dates to me are not, um, are, are not a big deal. If you find something with a good rank or if you're putting up your own listing, you're making it the best it possibly can be. You're optimizing it to make it the epitome of all listings. So if you can find something that you like or that, that is or is not seasonal and you're doing your own listing, the chances of you selling this have just jumped from, let's say, 10% to like 75%. You're going to fill in your own keywords. You're going to make your own pictures. You're going to make your own listing. You're going to give it all the love in the world. So yeah, you're going to make it, you're going to make it so much better. You're going to make it want to sell. Um, let's see what else we got here. Do I use a scanner or a particular app? I only use my Amazon seller app. I don't use anything else. Um, I don't feel it's necessary. People, like I said before, some people use like Camel, 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 and Keepa. Um, I, if I'm home or you know I'm at the desktop and I feel like there's some stuff that I want to look up that I've seen before and I want to just kind of get a good feel on it, then potentially I'll use like Camel, Camel, Camel. But otherwise, I only use my seller app. I don't use anything else. I'm not fancy. I go into a store, I break out my app, I take out my phone, I keep my headphones in so I can stay focused, and I just scan. That's really all it is. Just use my regular Amazon app. Uh, when you do bundles, do you have to create your own listing, or is it on Amazon already? Uh, when you do your own bundles, you have to create your own listing. You have to get your own UPC, which you can get on um, eBay. There, There's one piece of hair that's so annoying. <laughs> uh, when you do bundles, uh, yeah, you can get your own UPCs. You don't have to. That's so aggravating. That is, there we go. Um, is it on? If they're on Amazon already, most likely they're not. If you're doing your own kind of bundling, um, you don't want to jump on anybody else's listing. You don't want to be like a, a dirty person and you know take away somebody else's livelihood just because uh, because you found something that that they found. It's better to just if you if you're going to do a single, jump on a listing. If you're going to do a bundle, do your own you have such a better chance of being successful with it if it's your own than if you jump on somebody else's listing that they only did a half-assed listing on. They did bad pictures, they did bad keywords, they didn't fill in all the information, it becomes suppressed. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it. Um, am I considering getting into private label? I, I've done it before, honestly. I didn't like it. I really was not a happy person. Um, I really wanted to... Uh, I really wanted to, <laughs> to jump off a bridge, quite honestly. It wasn't fun for me. It was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and I didn't expect all of that. And I really thought it was going to be easy, and it wasn't. So if I ever get back into it again, I'm going to do it the right way. Um, I have some people that I work with now that I'm very close to, but I would want help. I wouldn't want to do it on my own again, quite honestly. So let's see what else we got here. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. It's so nice to see you all. Thank you. Um, so another question that people ask me is, um, do I ship to a warehouse, one warehouse, or do I ship to several? 
and a lot of people choose to ship their items all to one warehouse because one warehouse is cheaper is I'm sorry is more is more convenient in a box okay so let me rephrase that if I ship it all to one warehouse I don't have to worry about um, separating it into several boxes and paying for shipping for several different boxes um, what I do is I do what Amazon suggests if Amazon says to me you know you're in New York send 70 pieces to, to Pennsylvania 20 pieces to Florida 50 pieces to California and 20 pieces to Washington I do what they ask um, only because number one you're saving on fees the fees that they charge you are not tiny but they're not they're not substantial they're not going to ruin your business but why bother um, that's number one number two the time that it takes Amazon to ship your stuff from let's say if I ship it all to Pennsylvania and then they in turn ship it to California takes them a week so if I'm waiting for it to get to Pennsylvania it's taking them let's say three days to check it in or four days or up to a week during Christmas they're checking it in and then it's going over to California for another week then they have to check it in so in a turn instead of you spending a week to actually get your product to California now you're paying you're paying extra and you're waiting two weeks or could be a month it could be six weeks could be anything it could be anything in the world however fast they check in um, not to mention they charge you per piece and I don't really want to take anything away from my profit margins quite honestly I feel like the more you can um, save even if it's just 10 cents an item or 15 cents an item or 50 cents an item um, it's worth it uh, Amazon charges like eight dollars for a 40 pound box to Pennsylvania for me nine dollars a box uh, UPS it's super cheap I mean where where in any in any land could you send something 40 pounds to another state for like nine bucks I mean it's impossible so in my opinion I would just send it in and hi <laughs> in my opinion I would just send it the way it's supposed to go so you don't have to waste time and I'm big on not wasting time especially when you have a hot product you don't want to just let a hot product fly away you don't want to let it sit in two weeks in UPS at the, at the hubs get banged up in a box and then potentially get to Amazon damaged and then they say you damaged it why are you gonna go through all that send it where it's supposed to go and get it over with and then that's it uh, let's see somebody else has some questions um, do I use a virtual assistant to help you take pictures of your own listings or so it looks more professional no actually um, my assistant or, or myself we take our own pictures I don't do anything special or fancy I have a white cardboard background and it's it's pretty barbaric actually and I should probably invest in something uh, a little bit more um, substantial I guess but uh, I've never had any issues honestly uh, we take pictures of the front and back obviously we take pictures of side view depending on what it is if it's a bundle we take pictures of everything all together um, I don't even know how, how would you use a virtual assistant to take pictures um, sometimes if I have a stock photo online I'll use that um, if I can find something from uh, the manufacturers website or through Google um, those are usually the best but I don't I don't I don't feel the need to um, do anything super crazy if I was doing a private label product then I would have I would hire somebody a professional to do photography um, but if not then no I wouldn't let's see what else we've got here Amazon starting their own shipping company like UPS and FedEx yeah I've heard that also um, it's probably gonna be better for us um, Amazon is becoming a monopoly so I don't I don't know if it's gonna be better for the world but for us it's gonna be a lot a lot easier honestly you don't have to deal with um, you know UPS coming knocking on your door and all of this nonsense that UPS gives all these broken boxes and uh, and, and just problems honestly UPS just constantly has problems all the time uh, so yes yeah, so maybe that's a good thing uh, do I think Japan is a good market to go in is it worth it to do retail arbitrage or wholesale um, that's two different questions so I think uh, Japan's a great market to go into yes especially with American products and I say this about all um, international countries if you have American products going into international countries I find that um, they get bought up a lot faster so consider that if you can going to consider uh, selling anywhere else I might want to start with someplace a little bit more localized like uh, if you're going to do Europe you could Japan UK which is um, I think it's Spain France United Kingdom I can't think of what the others are but they're in a localized area I think Germany and they do all the the FBA for you um, I don't know if I would ship all the way to Japan to do a test uh, same thing as if you're um, wholesaling stuff or pulling stuff over from other countries 
it sell, they sell well in the United States also. So if you see something that, or if you know of something um, that is country specific or town specific, or um, you could have it shipped over to the United States, you know, just a couple just to try out. Uh, and I think that, I think it'll be pretty successful for you. So that's something to consider. Uh, is it worth it to do retail arbitrage or wholesale? Honestly, I can't answer the wholesale part. I don't do wholesale. I don't, I don't want to do wholesale right now. Um, there are other people that you can talk to on uh, Instagram and on Facebook and uh, just online in general. And they can give you an idea about wholesale. Um, but for me, retail arbitrage is the way that I, I, uh, I make my money. I prefer it. It's my preference. It may not be your preference. Um, for me, it's fun, honestly, and it's just really a matter of what you like to do and how you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable being in a store and scanning all day, then maybe wholesale or, or online arbitrage would be better for you. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, am I FBA only or do I dabble in eBay dropshipping as well? I am uh, multifaceted, my friends. <laughs> I do FBA. I do Merchant Fulfilled. I do um, Merchant Fulfilled Prime. I do Walmart, I do Sears, um, I do Shopify, and I do eBay. Um, and I'm not scared of any of them, honestly. I, I try to get my, you know, dip my toe into each one a little bit every, every other week or so, so that everything's constantly moving. Um, I do Mercari sometimes also, usually around the holidays, it, it's, it's pretty good. Um, but it's for things that I can't move on Amazon, so I throw it over there. I was actually just talking to somebody earlier about Walmart. Walmart is a special, a special kind of beast. Um, it, it's very barbaric in comparison to Amazon. So anybody interested in doing Walmart, there's like a screening process and you have to be like, <laughs> it's a lot of work. So if anybody wants to talk about Walmart separately, I'd be happy to talk about it. Uh, as far as drop shipping goes, I love drop shipping. I think drop shipping is the best thing in the world. I wish, I wish everybody was allowed to do drop shipping, quite honestly. Um, I know there are a lot of businesses that frown upon it, like uh, I know Target frowns upon it and some other stores and um, quite not, Kmart I know does as well. Um, for me, I think drop shipping is the greatest thing ever. Uh, everybody makes money. You're paying full price, whole, you know, full price retail. I'm making a markup. I'm selling it to the person. They're getting what they want. I'm making money. The retail is getting all of their money. I really don't see it as, as any kind of a... A threat or a loss or anything to anybody, but a lot of people have problems with that. Um, drop shipping on eBay is actually how I started doing e-commerce. I um, was doing it with a girlfriend part time from work when we had some off time, and uh, we just found some items by accident, and it just started to hit and hit and hit. And then before we knew it, we did a hundred thousand dollars the first year just drop shipping on eBay, um, and never touched an item. So. Uh, if anybody's interested in doing drop shipping, drop shipping is definitely fun. Uh, I know it's forbidden on Amazon, but I know there are people that do do it on Amazon. Um, but I would tell you to be very careful. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, I know you said you don't buy a product that ranks more than 100K unless you find something worth it, but with a higher rank, do you find it harder if you are new to come out of a store with something? Um, I don't exactly understand that. Sorry. Um... If something has a higher rank and no sellers, I will buy it um, because I know that there it has been sold in the past. If I find something with a rank that's um, below 100K and just a random scan, then nine times out of 10, I will purchase it. Again, it's always going to be based on a lot of different things. Like if Amazon is selling it, are the profit margins good? I don't want to make less than a $5 profit on anything ever. Um, and I also have to be wary of if price fluctuates or if someone comes on the listing and isn't exactly knowledgeable like how I am and what needs to be done as far as competition goes, um, they'll come on a dollar or two dollars less and then it becomes a dollar profit for me and then I'm just like, no thank you. So, you know, when you're looking things up, those are things you should, you should consider. Always consider your profit margins. Don't worry so much about the rank. Um, I, I, I said this in my last video, I'll say it again, I'll, I'll continue to say it until everybody understands. Everything will sell. There's not anything that won't sell. It may take time, but everything will sell. I sell Easter stuff during Christmas. I sell Christmas stuff during summertime. I sell, just you name it, it's gone. It goes. Just, you have to understand that it may not be as fast as you'd like it to go, but it goes. So, um, I never find it difficult to come out of a store without anything. I, um, I've never had an issue with that. Uh, I can walk into any store and spend ridiculous amounts of money and just 
walk out with a thousand products and then come home and start to cry because I have to do it all and take price tags off of everything. Um, have I looked into new egg? No, I haven't actually, but I, I, I know what it is and I, I think maybe that might be an option for me going down the line. Um, now that PayPal has cut ties with eBay's, how, eBay, how are you perce receiving payments? eBay just started with a new company whose name totally escapes me. I want to say it's Janice, but I know it's not. Um, it, they, they actually accept the payments for you, so you don't have to worry about uh, taking credit cards or anything. And PayPal is still an authorized uh, payment method for eBay. They're just not a preferred payment method. So people can still use PayPal. Um, when I buy stuff on eBay, I still use PayPal also. Um, <laughs> other Pixel wants to start doing retail arbitrage now. Tell him he can come to my house whenever he's ready and he's got a private tutor. Anyway, guys, my hour's up. I wanted to say thank you all for coming on. I really appreciate it. I hope, um, hope I gave you guys some insight on arbitrage, retail arbitrage, and what I do. And uh, I would like to give you guys, you know, just a really serious thumbs up because I know it's not easy. And the fact that you're on here and you're giving yourself a chance is tremendous. And the more I can offer you, please feel free to direct message me or... Um, you know, just comment on my photos. I'll be happy to answer anything. I try to check your, um, you know, your stories and your posts as often as I can. And I want you guys to feel comfortable doing this. This isn't something that you can just uh, jump into. And it's so important for you to really be comfortable doing this. Um, this is a business and, uh, and I wish you all the best. So it's good talking to you. And uh, I hope that's all right. No problem. I hope to uh, I hope to talk to you all again soon. Be well.